Hi, welcome to this video on how we go about summing particular types of series by using the method of differences. And this particular method generally applies to fractions here, which can be split into partial fractions. And the best way to demonstrate this is just through an example. So we'll take this example here where we've got to sum 1 over r, bracket r plus 2, sum from r going from 1 to n. Now, if we've got a fraction like this that can be split into partial fractions, then if we do that, I'm assuming by the way that you are familiar with partial fractions, if not, you can always go on my website, check out the tutorials on partial fractions. But what we have here is two linear factors, and we can say that this is identical to a constant, which I'll call A, over the first linear factor, R. And then we add this to another constant, divided by the other linear factor, R plus 2. And then in the usual way, we'd just multiply both sides by r, r plus 2, and therefore we'd have 1 is identical to a multiplied by r plus 2, and then plus b multiplied by r. And then to work out what a and b are, one of the common methods is to just let r equal particular values. And if we let r equal minus 2, it means that on the left hand side we therefore have 1 and it will be equal to, well if you put minus 2 in here this means that this bracket is 0 and a times 0 is 0. So it just leaves us with b times r, b times minus 2 which is going to be minus 2b and clearly you can see that it follows that b must be equal to minus a half. And if we set r equal to 0 it will take out this term here. So we'd therefore have 1 equals an a times 0 plus 2, that's going to be 2a. And as I said, b times 0, that's going to be 0, so it takes that term out. So it follows from here that a must equal 1 half. So we can therefore say that 1 over r multiplied by r plus 2 is exactly the same. It's identical then to a over r, so that's going to be 1 over 2r, 1 over 2r. And then it's plus b over r plus 2, and b is minus a half, so we've got minus 1 over 2 bracket r plus 2. So what I'm saying is that this then is identical to summing, okay? For this we can now replace it with these two fractions. So we've got 1 over 2r minus 1 over 2 bracket r plus 2. And we're going to put this in square brackets, okay? Because we're saying that we're summing the whole lot. And that's for r going from 1 to n. Now, when we do this, okay, what we do now is that we just put r equals 1 into these two terms to get the first part. So when r equals 1, we're going to have 1 over 2 times 1. I'm just going to write 2 bracket 1 there. I know that's a half, but don't work these things out at this stage. What I want to do is keep the pattern structure in here. And then we've got minus, and when r is 1, we've got 1 over 2 times 1 plus 2. 2 times 3, in other words, 2 bracket 3. And then when r is 2, let's put it directly underneath this one. And I would always suggest you do put it underneath the line above. So when r is 2, you've got 1 over 2 times 2. So plus 1 over 2 times 2. And then for the next term, we've got minus. And if r is 2, we've got 1 over 2 times 4. 
so 1 over 2 times 4. Now what I'm looking out for is a pattern to start to emerge. I can see that we've always got the numbers going 1, 2 and then we've got 3, 4 here but I'm going to put another line in, okay? It's not fully emerged just yet. So when r is equal to 3 we get 1 over 2 multiplied by 3 and then minus and then when we put 3 in here we've got 1 over 2 times 5. 1 over 2 times 5. And you should be able to start seeing that the next line would be plus 1 over 2 times 4. This seems to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. And the next one would be 1 over 2 times 6 as we go 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Now if I kept this going all the way down Let's look at what the last term would be when we take r equal to n. The very last term, we'll put it down here, would be plus 1 over 2 multiplied by n, when r is n. And for this one, it would be minus 1 all divided by 2 times n plus 2, 2 bracket n plus 2. So where's this going then? Well what I notice is that certain terms cancel one another out. Because can you see that we've got 1 over 2 times 3 and then up here we've got minus 1 over 2 times 3. So that would cancel out with that term there. And then I notice that this term here would cancel out with this term down here. So that means that this term here must cancel out with the one that was written here. So that one can go, let's just cross that one out. That one will go with the one that was down here. And similarly this one would go with the one that was down there and it would carry on all the way down. So can you see that I, if I was to do this, this term here would get cancelled out with a term that was not in the line above but in the line above that. What is the line above whilst we're here? The line above would have been when r was equal to not n but the one before that which would be n minus 1. So this would be 1 over 2 multiplied by n minus 1. Then it would be minus, and remember r is n minus 1, so it would have 1 over 2 times n minus 1 plus 2. In other words, 1 over 2 multiplied by n plus 1. Now, I said that this term would have cancelled out with the 1 just up here above this term. Let's just put a dotted line there. This term doesn't get cancelled out, but this term would have got cancelled out. It would have got cancelled out with a term above this one here. So if I was to mark that in brown, let's just take that one out. It would have got cancelled out with the one up there in that position. And don't forget, this one here would have got cancelled out as well, with one further down on the line below this one here. So we'll just take that one out, okay? We'll just delete it out. So what we're left with then is just four terms. We're left with the first term here, this term here, this term here, and this term here. All the others get cancelled out all the way down through there. So I want to finish this off and this is in the way so I'm just going to remove this section but do remember that what I've done here is I've expressed this in partial fractions. So what we've got then is that this summation now is equal then to this first term which is 1 over 2 times 1, in other words 1 half. We've got this term here plus 1 over 2 times 2 which is plus a quarter. Then we've got this term minus 1 over 2 bracket n plus 1 
and then finally this term here minus 1 over 2 bracket n plus 2. If we were to simplify this, this is going to equal a half plus a quarter, that would be 3 quarters, and then if I just leave these last two terms in, we've got 1 over 2 then times n plus 1, and then minus 1 over 2 bracket n plus 2. So there's our formula for the sum of the first n terms. Now suppose we're asked to find out what the sum of this series is. Well with careful inspection you can see that this series is generated from this term here. Because when r is equal to 1 we've got 1 over 1 times 3, the first term here. And then this second term is generated when r equals 2, 1 over 2 times 4. And then the next one is when r equals 3, and it goes all the way down to when r equals 9. When r equals 9, you're going to get 1 over 9 times 9 plus 2, 11. So this is exactly the same then as summing the series 1 over r, r plus 2. Let's just put that in there. 1 over r times r plus 2. r going from 1 to 9. So n is 9. And we've seen that this sum is equal to this. So if we just say that when n equals 9, then this is going to be equal to 3 quarters minus 1 over 2 times 9 plus 1. 1 over 2 times 10. Just put that in there. 2 times 10 minus, and then for this one, 1 over, and remember, n is 9, so it's going to be 2 times 11. 2 times 11. And if you work that out, you've got 3 quarters minus 1 20th minus 1 22nd. You end up with 36 35ths. OK? So, a nice way then of summing a series like that. Another application of this is that if you're ever asked to find out what happens as n tends to infinity, okay, we're summing this series for an infinite number of terms. Are we able to say what that sum is going to be? R going from 1 to n. So as n tends to infinity, what is this sum of terms going to be? Well, for this example, it's not going to always be true for all examples, but for this example, can you see that we know that this sum is equivalent to this. Now if n gets large, in this term, the denominator is going to get large, and so 1 divided by a very large number is going to tend to 0. And the same applies for this term. As n gets large, the denominator gets large. 1 divided by a large number is going to make this term 10 to 0. So you've got 3 quarters, take away 0, take away 0. So it's going to tend towards 3 quarters. So as n tends to infinity, this summation tends to 3 quarters. And quite often you may well be asked questions like that. So there you go. There's the difference method for you. Normally, in questions like this, the leading question will be to split this into partial fractions. And then when you've split it into partial fractions, which I did, we got these two answers. Let r equal 1, write down your terms. Then let r equal 2, write them down directly underneath. And then when r equals 3, and so on, until you start to see a pattern emerge where you can then start to cancel terms out. And this will only work if you've got a minus between your terms. And that's why it's called the difference method, obviously. And once you've discovered that pattern, taken out various terms, you can then just look at the terms that are left, write them down, and then you can apply this result in questions like this, and sometimes in questions like this. All right, so, Hope that's been of use to you, and there's the difference method for you.